1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. C'est bon Ok. <laughs> Hello everyone, thanks to be here with me today. I know many of you were expecting Frederic uh, for this, co this talk, his costumes, his great staging, he's just there, but he lost his voice, so he won't be able to make this talk. Uh, it's not because of yesterday, it's an old uh, topic. So, I'm Sébastien Bull, product owner at uh, Odoo and former business analyst. I'm quite glad and excited to be here to present you to this new application, Rental. For those who are new in the Odoo world, it's a brand new application. And, uh, but first, uh, let's take a step back to show what was the situation last year. Welcome to the OXP 2018. Hello, Sebastian. Hello, Luc. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad uh, to be here. Okay. Uh, because, you know, the implementation we did is awesome. I really love using Odoo. I just have uh, an issue, you know, because you remember I sell equipment, sound equipment for concerts, parties, etc. And I had a customer asking how I can rent him some material, and I have no idea how to do it in Odoo. Could you please help me? Okay, um, you know, it's a bit complicated to handle your problem with uh, Odoo. Maybe you can install Studio, create some fields, or also with some server actions, mm. you will be able to do something. And with a second screen, with an Excel sheet oh. for your product and your program, you can do something. All right, well, I'll give that a try, and I hope it will work. Thank you very yeah. much. Good luck. Today, to <laughs> today, to Hello, Sebastian. Hello, Luke. How are you? Good. How is your business? <sighs> Going really well. The, yeah? the rental business is awesome. I have so much demand, but I'm so tired. You know, I have six screens with three different softwares. I have to copy and paste everything from a screen to another. It's it's exhausting. The business is booming, so that's really great. But I'm so tired. So. Is there anything you could do for me that would be a bit more simple? In fact, yes. Yes. Oh. We worked really, really hard this year to present you a rental application. So let's first have a look to this short video. No. Shabbat on me that I. Thank you. Up to now, staying organized with my rooms and offices rentals was a daily challenge. Odoo Rental makes it easy to control all of my rental operations. Let's see how it works. When creating a quotation, I can adapt the offer in a few clicks to fit my client's needs. Of course, I can keep an eye on which product is reserved by day, week, month, or even year. It lets me avoid multiple reservations and help me schedule repairs or maintenance. Anytime, I can create reports of my rental's activity revenue by product or customer. Revenue by quarter or month. What if I need a new product? That's easy. It only takes a few clicks before being ready to be rented. renters want an extra day? Did they lose your key? Decide the price of those extras. Then have a look at your product's profitability with the analytic accounting and check which products you should rent with a higher price or simply stop renting. Try Odoo Rental for free on odoo.com and grow your rental business. So Luke, what do you think about that? 
that is so much better. It's awesome. I will finally be able to sleep at night and still manage all my rentals. I love it. Okay, great. But have a seat and I'll make you a short demonstration of yeah. all the capabilities of Odoo Rental. I'll have a look from there. Awesome, nice. Okay, great. Okay, <laughs> so even though this uh, little scenario was a bit exaggerated and the acting quite poor, <laughs> It describes well the situation of our customers and of our, our Odoo users. Um, we know, in fact, that the rental market was growing o over the years, and the ability to manage the rental in Odoo is a, was a frequent uh, request from our customers. We also checked the numbers, so we have an increase of 4% in the rental of building materials in, um, in Europe, so you know to rent a crane or a truck or anything. We have also a growth of 8% in the tourism industry. Why tourism industry? But because behind tourists, tourism, sorry, you have a lot of rental, you have to rent your accommodation, an hotel, a bed and breakfast, Airbnb, anything. You have to rent uh, your transport, either a car for a week, a bike for a day, or a jet ski for an hour, anything. Also, if you are going to ski, you have to rent your ski. So really, the market of uh, rental behind tourism is really, really wide. Of course, the market of the event, or the event industry, is also really big. In the US, we are planning 25 million events in 2020. And also, behind those events, you have a lot of rental. You have, like here, you have to rent the TV, the sounds, the projectors, anything. So it's really, really wide also for the event industry. So the, sc the scope is wide. You have transport. You can also rent clothes. Maybe next year you will have uh, an event at the same period in Villers La Ville. You would like to rent a night costume. You also have to, to rent it. Or you can also rent art. Uh, if you have a company and you want to display a nice painting of Picasso, you can rent the painting. So really, the scope is really, really wide. And finally, for environmental and uh, economical reasons, I don't want to make my climate activist or my Greta Thunberg, but really, the rental industry is, uh, of course, environmentally um, better. It creates less waste, etc. So um, it was for all those reasons that we decided to create this uh, new rental application. And also thanks to your feedbacks, uh, etc. So let's start um, by doing a short demo of the rental application. I'll take the case of Luke. He has a, an, an event company, uh, one office, one uh, one employee, so he rents uh, events materials and uh, services. He is working with uh, serial number and also uh, degressive pricing. Okay, so let's first start with uh, a uh, rental order. So I jump, sorry, not this one, into the database of um, Luke. So here, as you can see, we have several applications already installed, sales, sign, and the famous rental. I directly jump into the rental application and create a new sale order. Let's imagine that a client, John Doe, called um, Luke to book some, uh, some products. So you just have to fill the name of the customer and add a first product. So John Doe wants to rent a projector. So I first enter the first product, so the projector, and I just have to select the dates from when to when he wants to rent the product. So let's imagine here he wants to rent it from today till the, uh, next week, Tuesday. So we can change the time when he will come to pick up the product. So now he's on the phone. He's saying, OK, I'll come pick the product at 4. Uh, PM and I'll bring them back on the 8 at 12. Okay, perfect. I add this product. Directly, the price is computed according to the duration of the renting. So one week here, it's 99 uh, euros. 
I will explain you later how you can configure your product and uh, the pricing. So here we have a first product, then we'll add a second one, a printer. So I add a second product, printer. And here, as you can see, the dates are automatically, automatically set as the previous article. So it's from today till the 8th of um, October. Here, you have the choice. You can select a quantity, for instance, three, three uh, printer, and either select just one of the serial number, or you can select them after. In this case, I will di directly select them. Okay. And the price is also computed directly. Okay. I'll add the third product, a sound system. Oop. And here, as you can see, we also have the uh, product configurator as in the sale order. So you can select the variants, let's say uh, 1000 woofers, Pioneer Armin Van Buren, and one mic. And I add the product. Also, the options are also available. So I'll take the damage coverage and the transport and installation. And I'll confirm. Again, the dates are already set up in the pop-up for the rental. To quantity, I'll let it to one unit and add the product. I'll save my rental order and send it by email to John Doe. And it's okay. Now I'm logging as John Doe and I will receive the I receive the quotation. I can see here my projector with the dates, the printer, the sound system, and the options uh, I selected. I can sign and pay the quotation with the application sign. So you see everything is uh, integrated with other application of Odoo. So I can accept. I have the choice to pay with PayPal um, here in Genico or a wire transfer. I'll select a wire transfer and confirm my order. So let's go back in the database of um, Luke and I'll confirm also the quotation. In the chatter, you have uh, all the information and a small tag here in blue uh, saying that the products are reserved. Okay. So basically, the rental order is a sale order. And in fact, it was a prerequisite for the development of this application. We wanted to reuse everything that was already existing in Odoo. So we have the sale order, of course. It's exactly the same. There is no more fields, even though we uh, improved the sale order in uh, version 13. We still have the product configurator. We still have the sections and the nodes. You can still sign and pay online your uh, rental order. You also have the quotation template. What's new is the new date widget that we will also use in the event application. We also have an automatic cheapest price. I will show you later how the price is compute, but it's really easy and uh, it always selects the cheapest price. And finally, you can reserve uh, with the serial numbers. Maybe your products have specification according to their serial number and you can uh, select them uh, this way. Okay, so next we'll see how is made uh, the pickup and the return of the products. So I jump back, still need not this one, up. in the um, database of, uh, of Luke. John Doe is coming at my office, so he, will, he want to pick up the products. So I just have to click here on the primary button, pick up, and I have the list of the products available. Here, I reserved one projector, it can pick up one. I have the printer, I can add the serial numbers. Oh, one, two, three. And the sound system, and I can validate the, the pickup. Now I can see that on my sale order, and on my rental order, sorry, we have a new tag 
saying that the product has been picked up. I can also print a pickup and return receipt and give it to, uh, to John Doe. So here is the program, I can print it and give it to him. And also I can sign some documents for install a rental contract template in this case. Oops, sorry, didn't move it. Okay, so I can give it to John Doe. He can start to um, sign the document. Up. So you can see everything is integrated and linked to other applications. Up. Then, um, I know the contract is signed between uh, Luke and John Doe. Two days later, or when the, the event of uh, John Doe is passed, he can come back to return the product. Here, you just have to click on the return button and validate the product. You can, if you want, remove some product and make the pickup in two steps. Uh, in the, the return, sorry, in two steps. One today and the uh, the rest uh, the next day, for instance. And I can validate the return. From there, I can continue my flow. If I want to create an invoice, I can create here the invoice, post it, and give it to, um, to John Doe. Then register the payment, etc., and all the steps. Okay? So for the pickup and return, we wanted to keep everything in one screen flow. So we have the first step is the pickup, and you have exactly the same screen for the return. Also, you can work with serial numbers uh, for your products. You can make a full uh, or a partial delivery, or a full or partial pickup, and a full or partial return. It's really fully flexible, and it's totally synced uh, with your inventory. I'll just show you also how to make a late return. So here I have a um, rental order from Wood Corner, a, cli a client Wood Corner. And, it, and as you can see, uh, we have to tag late return on the rental order. I click on return. And here also we have this, the small clock here saying some delay, some delay cost will be added to the sale order. So as you can see, here we only have the uh, speaker test, and if I validate the return, which is late, I have a new line with the rental delay cost applied, okay, or 50 uh, euros. And of course, I can continue my uh, float and create an e invoice, um, etc. So fully flexible. That's that's nice. Then we, we have the, the Gantt planning. That's cool, we have some products, uh, we have the orders, uh, we can manage or rental this way. But what if somebody wants to rent a product right now? We have to know if the product is available or not. For that, we have the schedule. If you click here, you land on a Gantt view with all your products and the slots when they're uh, reserved or booked. Okay, so really your operator will use this uh, as their main control uh, panel. So, so their main control interface, that's very good. So you can group your product, uh, for instance, by category, you can group then by product, and finally by serial number. Up. And as you can see here, my printer are booked, print 01 is booked already. Uh, no the John Doe booked three printers with those serial numbers, so you can really see everything from this, uh, this view. Also, you have the colors. In red, that's the late return, uh, sale order of w which are late. In um, blue, you have the return products, and in light blue, you have the reserved products. So really, this interface is really cool uh, for your uh, operators. 
You can also expand run rows or uh, collapse them and see which product is booked uh, or not. You can also jump from, if you want to, to see a, a sell order, you can click on the, on the slots and go back to the sell order in just one click. So it's really uh, easy to navigate through the schedule and the sale order or the rental orders. Okay. So, read, so the GAN view allows you to see the availability of the products. You can group them by uh, product, by category, by uh, tag name or anything. You can jump in one click to the order and with the colors you can see uh, which product is reserved, picked up or uh, a late return. Okay, that's cool. Let's see now how we can configure a product for the rental application. Oops, sorry. So here I'll create, a, I have already some products, I'll create a new one. Let's say a speaker. You just have to check this new box, can be rented. And when you check that box, you have a new tab, rental. There you can configure the price uh, of your product. First, the duration. For, let's say, one hour, the speaker will be five euros. For one day, one day, it will be, let's see, 55 euros. And for one week, you will have uh, this price. Okay, so you can configure the price by hour, by day, or per, uh, by per weeks or per month. Also, you can add um, cost for delay, some delay cost. So for one extra hour, you can say it's five euros, and for one extra day, it's 50 euros. You have also some uh, security time. It's um, kind of a padding time before you can rent the product. Okay, to, to avoid conflicts between two reservations uh, or process admin, some repair or something. Okay, if you want to plan after my product is returned, I want to check if everything is, uh, is okay with the product, you can uh, add this security time bef before the next uh, order. Okay, then you can go into your inventory tab and here you can select, for instance, to track your product by a serial number and then you can save and update the quantity. I'll create a first serial number of one and let's say I have two products. That's all. That's all I have to do to create a rental product. So it's really, really uh, easy to do that. Yep, so you can um, make a pricing per duration. You can specify some uh, extra costs, a security time, and serial numbers. Also, if you want to install, if you have installed on your uh, database the price list, you can set up price list per uh, duration. So here I quickly install the price list. I go back on my products. It was this one. And now on the rental tab, I can specify as a price list for my US customer or my uh, European customers. So it's really, really uh, easy to do that. Okay, for the pricing, we have um, smart pricing. So here I've created my product with one hour, it's five euro, one day it's 55, one week 250. I will just add a last unit, uh, last duration, sorry, for per month, let's say 1,000 euro. And I'll create a new order. 
still for John Doe. And I'll select a speaker I just created. <laughs> so for one day, Sorry? Products. Speaker. Here we have the price. Perfect. So, here for one day, it will. You have the computation just below here the price. So it's one time one day. So 55 euros. And you also have the extra costs uh, indicated just below the price. If I select. Um, from the Thursday to Tuesday, it will compute uh, one week. So let's try the last one. If I select from the third to the 24, three weeks, it's perfect. But if I select more from the three to next uh, month, sorry, from three to 19, I didn't set the monthly price, I guess. Yeah. So in fact, it will always compute um, the cheapest price. So here we have the, the table with the, the pricing. So for this period from the third to the 14, it will compute two weeks because it's the cheapest price. The same here in the second example for this period from the 3rd of October till 19 um, November, it will compute two times one month. Okay? So it will automatically uh, take the cheapest price with no combination of lines. It will not say one week plus two days. It will take um, nine days, for instance. Okay, so the price is multiplied by an integer to cover um, the, the periods. You also have uh, powerful reports in, um, in the application, so let's check that. You have the reporting where you can um, select a specific uh, product, for, for instance, uh, project. And here you can see that my project, the variation of the rental in, um, during the year. So I have some high season, let's say. So you can plan that uh, during September till October, you have a lot of rental uh, for this product. You can check the quantity picked up, the quantity return, etc. So it's a really powerful. You can also change to the pivot table and see all your products this way. Okay. It's also linked to other applications. So if you go into your accounting application and you uh, create some uh, accounting tags, you can go into the reporting, profit and loss, and check for the same product. I've already created a tag for the projector. And I can see um, that my operation of, for this specific product. So we need uh, power for the reports are very good, very impressive. OK. So Luke, what do you think? Oops. Uh, of first, <laughs> what do you think about this uh, application? Um, actually, I might be a bit carried away, but I'm thinking about something. I have a house in France that I should be renting during summers, uh, but you know, I never find time to do it, which means I'm losing money. Do you think I could use a rental app like this with my products being like the house and the rooms? Is it something I could do? Totally. 
I'll show you, I have also on this database, I have an, an, another company, in fact, Martin Slouin Laneuve. And if I go in my um, rental application, I can see my schedule with my rooms. Here I have the standard room, which is booked for this week by some famous people. And you can also, without any problem, create a new rental order for this, uh, for this kind of service. So let's say Elon Musk is coming back again. You can select a product, here the standard room. Okay, and you can, now for the period there is no uh, serial number available because the room is already booked for this period of time. So if we select a date in the future, let's say for, for Christmas, up, take all the week. And now I can select a room I will give to uh, Elon Musk when he will come uh, at Christmas. So it's really easy and uh, it totally fits the needs of uh, a hotel or a bed and breakfast or for your house in the uh, in south of, uh, of France. Up. So it's perfectly uh, tailored for the, for the hotels. You can see the room availability. You can also add specific uh, options on, on your rooms, a breakfast at uh, or anything, and the check-in, check-out is exactly as a picking and a pick-out uh, return uh, for, uh, for the products. So it's fully integrated uh, with all the application of uh, Odoo. You have the inventory application. I show you the accounting application and the analytic accounting, etc. So really uh, totally um, integrated with all our other applications. You will ask me now, What's next? Next is the online rental. So it's, we are working on it and there is already something uh, uh, kind of ready and we are, uh, hopefully we'll show you for the next uh, version of uh, Odoo. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> if you have any questions, there is a mic somewhere. Probably. Come on. Ah, to make it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, hello. Hello. Um, I was wondering, how do you handle deposits? Deposit? Yeah. Uh, Frederick. Into the payments. Guarantee. Okay. You can create a down payment. I will just change. Uh, I don't mean down payments. Like if you uh, you want to rent a car, but you have to down, uh, you have to pay like a, a security, like 100 euro, uh, euros security. So you pay it in front, and then afterwards you get it back. Fred will answer the question. <laughs> okay, so I come here to I come here to answer. Well, as you can hear, my voice is quite bad. That's why I couldn't present today. But thank you, Sebastian. It was absolutely great. So actually, for the deposit, what you can do is you add an extra product that you refund after the, uh, after the, the return from the invoice. So actually, in the invoice, you refunded. It's how, actually how you can do. Uh, yeah, otherwise, it can be deducted to the order using the down payment. So actually, you have two ways to uh, to proceed. It's up to you. Okay. Okay. Please come downstairs yeah, to yeah. ask the question so that everybody can hear. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I would like to know if we have a view for uh, the hours. For for example, I am renting meeting rooms. I would like to see the same meeting room being uh, scheduled from 8 to 12 and from 12 to 16. Uh, here in the schedule uh, tab, you can change the, the view. You have year, month, week, or day. And here you have the, um, the timing uh, or the schedule of the whole day. So if you can check that here. Can you add, was that complete that answer? I guess, yes. It's okay. <laughs>
Can you tell me what are the uh, minimum required other modules we need to run the rental app? It's only invoicing if I, if you create a new that the it's only invoicing, eh? no? Only invoicing. Yeah. So actually, with the uh, with the rental application, there is a dependency to invoicing that is actually included. In, uh, in, in the one module. app free, yes. Yeah, it's one app free. So when you install rental from uh, from the odoo.com, you'll you'll have the rental and invoicing included one package for free, and then you can extend it with the warehouse management the inventory app. Uh, it's a paid app, but that you can add plus all the other modules Sebastian explained, from subscriptions to uh, to uh, to accounting. But the default setup is uh, rental. And, and invoicing. If you want to um, manage the availability of products, you can install inventory on top to manage the numbers as well. I have a second question. Sorry, guys. Uh, can we read in EIDs um, into the application? EID? Mm -hmm. So you're li likely referring to the sign application where people yeah. can sign papers? No, it's not. Oh. Talking about uh, reading, talking about reading identity cards because that's really important for most rental companies. Uh, no, that yeah. part is not uh, is not integrated. Uh, no, what you can do is you take a, a snapshot, a copy of the card, and you attach it to the order mm. or to the customer form, and it's actually very easy to do using the chatter. So, the right side of the of the order is uh, using the chatter and there, as Sebastian is showing right now, you can attach any kind of file that will be kept in the order history. Yeah, um, in the presentation, I see you first have to return the, the products before you can make an invoice. Is it possible to uh, to invoice uh, during the rental? Like um, there are a lot of uh, rental companies who who like to have a long re uh, long term of a rental, and they want they don't want to wait uh, for the money at the end of uh, the return. Uh, you don't have to wait for the return here. The sale order is in picked up, so the product is in uh, with the client, so you can already create the invoice from here. And, and then it looks at the time that it's already rented. Uh, no, it will take the full uh, period of time for the rental. Yeah, but um, in case that someone rents a product for, for example, one month, and, and uh, at the end of the month, at the, the products are still at the client, so yeah. it's an, another month is passing. And, and you want to have a, a kind of recurring invoicing during the rental, how do you solve that in the solution? Okay. Uh, Federico, can I help on that? Actually using subscriptions. So on the, the product you rent, you apply a subscription template that will trigger a subscription with a monthly invoicing. So the first invoice will be tr uh, triggered and managed from the sales order. The next ones from the subscription. Yeah, but then you have to follow it up manually because subscription app is um, is not linked to the rental app. Yes, indeed. So it's a manual process. So you, when you, when the, you uh, return the product, you stop the subscription. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's uh, difficult for a rental company to manually follow it up, and it's better to to start from the rental order because uh, the rental order knows where the products are and how long that, are, that they are at the customer. Um, because with the subscription module, uh, in case of there is one product returned and two other products are still in rental, you don't have this, this uh, subscription model to have that information. Yes, I totally uh, get that. Well, it's uh, also it's a matter of trade-off. Here we wanted to introduce something quite very simple to take in hand without too many options. So we considered 
some integrations with, uh, with subscription, we step back to not complexify the interface. Maybe there, are, there, there is some uh, way for improvement for the future. This is the first version, uh, but at least it works. It's manual process. You can automate it with, with easy server actions, a few lines of code if you want to. But uh, the thing that mattered uh, the most to us at first was uh, that all the flows were possible, and they are. It's a manual process, but still compatible. And uh, can it be something to be added in the new version, in version 14, for example, no. to automate it? We can keep the feedback. <laughs> well, for the work already in progress at Odoo is the, the online version, so that the customer can book uh, products online as they can do for events or, or normal products in the shop. So that's already in progress. Uh, we have also little improvements here and there that could still land in version 13 or version 13.1 for the SaaS users, uh, like a better integration of, uh, of the GAN view in the rental model. So f straight from the order, you'll be able to check, uh, to check out the calendar, for instance, so, so that you don't have to navigate from one menu to the other. You can directly do it from the order. So those are the things we, uh, we have in mind for the moment. Yeah. In fact, mine was the same, the same question. It was <laughs> related to monthly invoicing and so on. And only one, one more question. Is it possible to, to let the end date uh, without it? I mean, uh, no end date? So that you, you have not a compromise to... to uh, actually, no. Here you have to set an end date. It's mandatory. And this is what defines the price. If you don't have any end date, actually, you can even... You don't even need maybe the rental app. You can directly do it in a normal sales order or from the subscription. But the, the, the goal here of the, of the end date is to compute an accurate pricing based on the duration. Well, if you don't have any end date. So basically, yeah. basically, you have to define, if you, if you want to rent for uh, one year an invoice monthly, you have to define a rental for one month and then make a subscription. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's two Something subscription. Like or make a rental of one year and, and invoice it multiple times with a partial subscription. Yeah, but it's a but bit how? more complex <laughs> I mean... Well, it's a bit more complex because uh, you know what? Uh, uh, yeah. For the fact of not uh, specifying the return date, you can change it after. So you could reserve it for one month and then if the customer says, I want to keep it one year, then you change it for one year. And the price is adapted if you didn't invoice it yet. Yeah, it's something to study. <laughs> yeah, and actually here, it's a good point. It's fully flexible, so anytime you can come back to the order, change the dates, change the price, and it will automatically uh, be updated. And what is invoiced is is saved and you can, in case you, the changes apply extra, the system will, uh, will allow you to charge those extras. So you will not be invoicing the same, the same thing twice. Okay. Uh, in uh, the profit and loss uh, report, uh, the, the cost of uh, revenue, uh, how is it calculated? So here there is nothing new compared to a sales or purchase process. Mm. Uh, we had a lot of feedbacks about being able to compute uh, the, um, the profitability of uh, rental items because it's key in some businesses to know exactly which product or which kind of product is profitable or not in the, re in the rental um, uh, according to the turnover etc. So here, what we did is making sure that we were fully compatible with analytic accounting, so that using uh, the analytic default, it's an add-on you have in uh, the accounting, you can automatically fill, fill up the analytic tags or the analytic accounts in the invoice for every single product, r rented product that you, uh, that you sell. And that way, actually, you've got a profit and loss 
that is dedic purely dedicated to your products. So whenever you do some operations on those products, whether you repair or buy some parts, you set up this analytic, you put this analytic account in the invoices, and this gives you a global financial overview of each product using the profit and loss. You can also do it uh, using the analytic report. Both are available. What I'm asking is about the value itself, yes. amount, the value of the cost. It's calculated from uh, which figures? It's not, of course, uh, the purchase. Well, actually, yes, it is. Well, it, it's like it's like any other. It's shrinking. But it's, it's, the, the, the cost is the same. Uh, it's the same thing when you buy the product. It's a cost for your company. It, the cost uh, is set on the product, and this is the one used. Uh, well. This might be misleading somehow because for every time I rent the, this product, I uh, allocate the whole cost of the product. Not it's like uh, from the previous practice uh, we used to do, uh, to use the, the, the depreciation value, so you have to integrate with assets uh, uh, system. Yes, so this is the way to do it actually. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, if you do it straight using the cost of goods sold in the invoice, you're going to have the same cost applied multiple times, and this is not what is expected. So using the assets. Yeah, good one. Let's go to the left first. <laughs> yes. Hello. Uh, with what kind of data mass you have tested this with? Sorry? Uh, for example, if I have tens of thousands of units in circulation, what kind of impact it will have on the performance? Uh, f for the Gen view specifically, or no? For yes. Well, it pretty much affects everything. With uh, how with how many products do you have tested this with? I have no idea how many, but with the new ORM from uh, Fabien, you know it will be so fast. <laughs> I don't know. 